friend we haven't met. Never before. <laughs> we haven't met. No chance. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> Welcome to another Behind the United Art Gallery video podcast. Today, we have a portrait photographer from the United Kingdom, Sarah Wheel. How are you doing? I'm really well, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's great. Thanks for, yeah, thanks for joining us. I was li really looking forward to talk to, to you today. So just tell us a little bit more about you. Um, well, I'm a portrait photographer, as you said. I work um, normally, mostly in editorial and um, creating content for websites. So, um, uh, and recently I've done a lot of work for on makers and artisans. So I've worked a lot for a website called thegarnered.com and I'm sent to uh, photograph um, artisan makers in their studio at work. So I suppose um, it's portraiture mixed with reportage. Very nice. I like, I do both and I like both very much. Yeah. Because you can be pretty creative in a reportage too, if you have just time and you can just see other people work and yeah. Yeah, I saw already some images and we're going to talk a little bit later about them and I like them a lot. So my next question is, how did you become a portrait photographer? Such a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> I think um, I was, I didn't know it, but I was a portrait photographer before I decided to be a portrait photographer. <laughs> I mean, I got my first camera when I was 14 and I only ever photographed people. Um, and obviously I photographed my friends at school first and then my family and I went to university but I always had a camera on me and I always photographed people. Um, after university I went and did a course at London College of Printing as it was known then, now London College of Communication and um and it was during that year that i realized oh i only photograph people <laughs> it seems that i'm a portrait photographer <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that made me a portrait photographer i guess um and when i graduated i started working for magazines and private commissions very yeah. nice very nice uh did you ever shoot analog film or did you yes. start straight with the digital? You're yeah, right. Okay. No, you're trying to ask my age now, but oh yes, I. <laughs> <laughs> I <shot>. No, you <laughs> see my camera here in the background. I'm I'm shooting a lot of analog. That's the reason I'm asking. Yeah. No, I when I started my career, I was shooting um, on film on a Hasselblad. Oh. I could only afford one lens, so I had a Hasselblad with a lens and that's it and uh, most of my early commissions were just using that I would I would get sent off um, for a magazine and shoot three rolls maximum of 12 frames and I would consider that I had to deliver at least three good pictures from that so it's amazing now you know how much we shoot with digital in comparison to just, you know, those few frames. Um, but I don't really shoot digital. And I think I made the transition in about 2006, 2000 and something like that. I don't know. I like environmental portraits um, a lot. I think mostly the, the sorts of commissions that I got were, people within an environment, it made sense to show that space around them. And half the story is told if you show where people are. So it, it, it always worked quite well, yeah. Oh, very good. Uh, There's one question I ask everybody is, uh, how has the pandemic affected you, your work, your environment? There is none. <laughs> uh, yeah, I lost, um, I think I lost six jobs in one morning. Um, and the phone kept ringing, but it was always to cancel. It was a very depressing Friday morning, I remember. Um, I think 
I kind of, I just don't know how it will affect long term. This is the, the real question. Um, at the moment, I feel like we're all just holding our breath, you know? It, it, I'm not working, uh, but no one else is working. So I feel like it's just about okay, <laughs> you know, psychologically. But the problem will be what happens next. And actually, I lie. I have had a couple of commissions just in the past two two weeks. Um, people who've seen the project who have asked me to do shoots. So. Yeah, your project is very nice. We can show the first images in the, in a few seconds. And yeah, it's it's was the same here. I like I said before, I have my first. Uh, corporate portrait shoot now on Friday after uh, everything stopped and I'm really looking forward to it to meet new people but with yeah. distance and wow. I have I cannot show it to you I have like my my facial masks with my branding already <laughs> they are oh wow there. wow wow well done <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like they're black ones maybe give me a second I'll show it yeah to yeah you. show me so just let them make in Oh, looks no. a little bit a, bit, a little bit gangster like, right? Yeah, yeah, but that's good. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 gonna be fun with the people, and we gonna I gonna entertain them with my mask, and it's gonna be yeah. So then I start sharing uh, my screen. Just uh, uh, explain what's going on in the image. How did you, did you get there? No, just your story. What do you want to okay. talk about? Um. Well. So, do you want me to introduce the project first? Yeah, sure. Okay. Sorry, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it's this was one of the first pictures that I took in what I've called a furloughed friendship, um, which is a lockdown portrait project that I started right at the beginning of the UK lockdown. Um, do you have this term furloughed in? Uh, do you know, do you understand the word furloughed? Yeah, I thought it was like, like uh, uh, somebody to, you know, or somebody. Um, so this is a term that we only really became conscious of in this country a few weeks ago. It's what, um, it's what companies can do to um, keep their employees, but not pay their employees. Uh. So, oh, I uh, totally to, misunderstood to, that. Ah, so to furlough, to furlough someone was to say, um, okay, you, you're still working for us, but the government is going to pay you, not us. And it was a whole scheme that was put in place. I just hear my children. Guys, but guys. It's okay. That's <laughs> oh fine. Dog. Hi, dog. You're going to come and say hi? Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> so, um, I've lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, yeah, companies uh, put you on furlough and the government pays you 80% of what you would receive. And, um, and I felt that it was appropriate for this series because, of course, our friendships are also furloughed. They are on hold. They are not 100% anymore. We can't communicate. We can't see each other in the same way that we used to. So that's the title, that's the reason for the title. And um, very quickly I realized, um, like many other photographers who are doing similar projects out there, that it had to be behind glass because um, uh, I just felt that the glass told the story so much better. Yeah. Um, First of all, I learned something that now I really misunderstood it, but it's similar here with the 80%. And yeah. I like the class so very much. You know, you just see what they're seeing and the same yeah. moment you see them too. And yeah. uh, this was, uh, I have to go on a little bit. This was also the question in the German podcast when I was talking about the United Art Gallery and we came uh, over this image and he asked me, do you think there's Photoshop used? I think. And I said, no, I don't think so. You know, I think this is like a little uh, older class or this style of class that makes these, makes these funny reflections. And that was yeah. that is my next question for you. Okay. Well, in this instance, the glass 
was very special um, and uh, I haven't been lucky enough to photograph through such beautiful glass every time but this is really old glass that is handmade um, it, it's just their window obviously um, but it's it's kind of wavy it has a, a, t a real texture to it and um, and basically it just made these reflections but I think the very old glass is incredibly thin so even though you have the reflections and the light bouncing off it in all sorts of directions you also really can see the people very well in a way that with double glazed glass or just thicker glass it's it's more complicated so no there's no photoshop at all um super super nice I, so I, I was totally right i liked it <laughs> yeah no i i don't even use photoshop i i i'm crap at photoshop <laughs> i don't use it nice nice to hear i like that i i use photoshop for some stuff i need but i like to uh do as much in camera as as possible yeah definitely i really like that so how do you communicate with the people with these people behind the glass well yeah i mean that's a real thing that i've that has that has come up over shooting this series and it's really interesting it's so different to how i shoot normally um which is much more a collaborative process um when you photograph people through glass you can't communicate with sound um i don't i don't use phones i know a lot of photographers are um, are using phones to communicate but again for me the story is that we can't communicate so we have to find another way and um, and something happens during the shoot often different things happen depending um, but often there's a kind of quietness and a concentration that comes and a stillness because you are having to look for every little um, you know signal or micro expression from both me or them to communicate and i i've really enjoyed that actually it's it's got quite i mean you know when you're a portrait photographer there's always a moment in a shoot that can be quite sort of magical where everyone is in sync and you just know you're getting the shots um your subject has relaxed and trusts you and is really looking in the camera and you can tell they're not thinking about what they're going to cook for dinner or whether their train is you know arriving you can tell they're really with you and that's a really amazing moment anyway but i think that with this extra barrier of glass which of course as a photographer we're always looking through glass so this is just another layer of glass um there's something that happens and and what i wanted to say about this picture is that um apparently what happened was that these people felt very uninhibited um so the woman susan bell is is a photographer as well actually and she we've known each other for 20 odd years um, I've known the whole family a long, long time. So I really wanted to photograph them together. Um, and she said to me afterwards that having the glass there made her feel much more relaxed, made her feel that she was almost putting on a show, but she didn't mind, like she just felt protected. Um, so I thought that was quite interesting that, that she communicated that maybe it's because she's a photographer and photographers hate being photographed <laughs> i don't know um but yeah i thought okay that's another thing that the glass brings is maybe i can't put my subjects at ease as much as i normally would by talking to them by maybe showing them what we're getting but but the glass is doing that for me very interesting i always learn so much with this this uh this is the podcast podcast right now and yeah. it's really interesting yeah? i never thought about that it's really cool that you don't call them that you just really try to figure out figure it out during uh your shoot i guess you yeah. have some some waiting in between too 
some waiting. Mm -hmm. Just to, to uh, wait for the right moment. Yeah, um, I like to, I think as a portrait photographer anyway, I quite, I don't really like artifice. So I don't direct very much anyway in my photo shoots. I like the sitter to take the lead and to, um, I think it helps them feel comfortable if they are the one to determine a lot of things. Um, so in this uh, series, for instance, you will notice that sometimes I'm photographing four people, then uh, two, then one, and, and really that happens very organically. Um, I don't have a plan. I don't tell people um, in what way I want to photograph them. I just kind of let it happen. That sounds, sounds really great. Okay, let's jump to the next one. Okay. Um, yeah, so for instance, this one, this is a, a couple who have two children and I know the children really well, but they didn't come to the window. Um, and I didn't ask them to because I never want... Uh, people to come to the window if they don't want to be there so uh, actually I haven't spoken to them about it I don't know whether now they think oh she didn't photograph our kids uh, but that's just what happened you know they were there they presented in this way um, I really like this picture but I don't actually think it's a very good picture of them if you know what I mean <laughs> I really yeah. I think it's a strong image but i don't think it's the best portrait uh especially of her she's much softer than that in reality but i just thought there was something so strong about their eyes almost on the same level and and johnny is an actor and he halfway through the shoot he just went and got his vape and he started vaping and it was just great i mean i was like i'm not gonna give that up it was it was too uh, too you know <laughs> visually interesting um but i guess it is a little bit of a prop there are other images in the series where i think it maybe shows them more their character but that's this fine that's also the moment i mean maybe he's missing acting and this was his moment to act you know and if that if that's what this photo shoot was, then that's great. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really a strong image. That's the reason uh, I chose it for the gallery too. I really like it a lot. It was also through lovely glass. It's another one that had beautiful glass. Yeah. I, th I think that's really makes something. If you look at this, this red to the, to the left, maybe it's a car or something. That yeah, it's a car light. Yeah. yeah. It's really, really nice. It's like they're a little bit dreamy somehow. Oh, yeah, now I can see the whole car, right? It's a car. Yeah, it's a gray car. So it sort of merges with what they're wearing. I mean, I, I, I was lucky. Yeah. Um, and she, I love the fact she sort of, uh, Lucy kind of dressed for me. She, she decided to wear this lace, you know, and I think it's quite interesting because uh, for a, for a normal portrait shoot, people will always dress up. People will always wear their best. And there was a, a feeling that maybe with a lockdown portrait, maybe people shouldn't wear something, you know, a little bit special, but, but why not? You know, they're still, we're still making a portrait together. I've, I've not given any direction by the way. So some people, you know, people have done what they wanted. Yeah, it's very cool. I think uh, a lot of people will do some, uh, will wear some stuff or will we'll maybe wear perfume every day or something just to make them feel more comfortable at home or more, more like a ritual to have every day to do something. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll go to the next one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's the next one? Oh, okay. Yes. So this is another element of the the glass that I have really enjoyed, um, which is obviously the the reflections of the outside world. Um, this world that we are prevented from going out into. Um, and uh, and as you said, that they can see and that is therefore in, in 
imposed on them. Um, but um, but also as a photographer, it's quite it's quite special because they can't possibly know what reflections I'm putting on them. So he is just standing there looking at a woman with a camera in front of her face and I am putting a tree in his belly and he has no idea I'm doing that at the time. Um, so that becomes like this quite sort of private moment for me and quite playful and, and one that is so, 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 so different to how I normally work, where I'm constantly, there's a constant dialogue between me and my subject. And suddenly I'm kind of playing, it kind of feels quite empowering almost, you know, <laughs> in this moment where we have no power, uh, I get to sort of put trees in bellies or cars through people. It's, it's quite, it's quite fun. Um, and in this case, I found it especially poignant, I guess, because it was one, of, again, it was one of the first pictures I took. And, um, you know, we were really anxious. We are still, but there's a, there's a definite anxiety here um, for all of us. Uh, and I just felt that this kind of symbolized, <laughs> symbolized that anxiety. Um, having things growing inside us yeah yeah i didn't thought about that one when i looked at the picture but now it makes even more sense yeah absolutely you, you know what the other figure too if i look at the image you know I, I, and if i really focus on the tree and focus on the roof from the little house or whatever it is garden house or something yeah maybe, yeah uh I have the feeling I can really fade away the portrait a little bit and, and see a little bit the environment. And then if my look goes up a little bit, I'm, I'm straight, uh, straight away to the portrait also. It's, it's really interesting to look a little bit longer at these images. I'm going to change to the next one. I like this. Uh, before we change, I have to say I like this video. The, the uh, look is very strong and uh he's holding something in his hand whatever it is i, th I, don't, I don't know i just uh, I like this one a lot yeah i think it's a hat i don't know yeah. i can't remember now what it is yeah i um i really like this picture it's 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 really difficult for me um to not bring all the stuff i know about people to the to the picture if you know what i mean i I'm used to photographing people I don't know. So suddenly to be doing a project where I'm photographing people I know really well, that I know things that are happening in their lives, um, it's really difficult for me to then look at the image and ask myself, is this a good portrait, even if you don't know any of those things? Um, in a way that when I do my normal work, I feel like I have that distance already. Um, you see, in this case, this guy is a barrister and he's just had a big promotion. He's just been made um, what's called Queen's Council. So he's had a massive step up in his career. And just as that's happened, coronavirus has come along and no trials are happening in Britain. And so he's gone from a huge high in his career to suddenly being at home and mowing the lawn and, you know, not earning any money at all. Um, and I just, uh, I, you know, I know that, but obviously you don't. So I'm happy if, if you still like the portrait, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, no, I, no, no, that's good. <laughs> That's the reason we do the Behind the United Art Gallery, because it's interesting to hear stories behind it. Sure. It's, uh, uh, you know, you see a strong image and you think, wow, and then if you hear the story behind it, you get maybe goosebumps or something, you know. You're storytellers, right? And, and if you can go on with the storytelling beyond the image, it's even more interesting, I think. So, yeah. the next one. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah. Um, well, this is, I mean, I think the other thing that I discovered uh, photographing for this series is just a very simple fact that, of course, we are all, well, 
No. Those of us who are lucky enough to be isolating with people we love are incredibly grateful to be isolating with people we love. Um, that doesn't mean that there's also moments when we would prefer to get away, but, um, you know, it's, it's incredibly, you know, if we can't see anyone on the outside world to have a few people around that, you know, your close family is incredibly important. And, um, I've, I've really loved photographing parents with their, especially older children, ones who can bring, um, you know, older children can, can sort of sometimes be the parent, uh, within a family unit and in this case it was it was really moving um he was on his erasmus year uh in south america and he came back to be with his mother um and yeah i again i i didn't pose them in any way i was just photographing him and um his mother lisa just came up behind him and gave him a hug and i just thought it was really really sweet how sort of strong he is and how actually she's looking a bit more vulnerable and uh yeah it was just sweet absolutely no i like the pose this it looks like somebody would put them there and say like still like that but they just did it but they did it by themselves so it's yeah yeah really, really nice and i really love his knuckles in his uh he's got his hands in his hoodie and i love that you can see his like the outline of his hands i don't know why it just yeah. kind of just kind of looks don't know well, strong there's a strength there with the her hands and then his hands are there but hidden i i don't know, I quite like it uh, uh, i also like the this is again a very old window i would say Probably old window from, yeah. yeah 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 i think it is and i don't know where the um at the top you there's this kind of rainbow uh mm -hmm. effect and i'm not entirely sure how that happened it's not in the sky it's in the window um it's so, just perfect <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it was i was pleased with that picture okay super very nice go one more uh, oops. ah so yeah so this is um well we've already talked about the reflections this is one where to be honest with you it was it was really difficult it was very windy so all those branches were constantly moving so even if i did manage to focus on uh holly's eyes then suddenly the wind would change but but what happened was we we went into quite a zen like state taking this picture and um and it was really a moment of this is a very good friend of mine and i really miss spending time with her and i think she with me and we just really just had both because of the technical difficulties but also because because of that missing each other there was a real moment where i don't know it just connected and um and I really, I really like this picture for that. She was also the first person I photographed <clears throat> in the project, but I hadn't warned her I was coming. I just arrived with my camera. So she opened her window and I took some pictures of her with the window open. And it was shortly after that I realized, no, no, it has to be with window shut. So I went back to do, to do another picture. Yeah, it's really nice. I talked, I think, with my girlfriend also about it, and she liked it a lot because of the reflections yeah. and because it's a little bit different uh, than the normal porch portraits you see sometimes. And this is really like you see, you see some interior, you see, you see the outside, you see the person. It's really interesting. I like it a lot. Okay, jump to the next one. Okay. Um, yeah, so this one is a, a quite similar i suppose to the one of uh mother and son um two back uh this one i mean i i again i just i wasn't 
there for very long. I shot this very, very fast um, because when I arrived at the house, um, they told me that they had lost someone uh, really recently, um, not to COVID, but well, they weren't sure whether it had contributed. And so there was a real sense of, um, I, I felt very, well, A, honored that they were still happy to pose for me, but also like I had to be respectful for, of their grief that they were going through. And there was just so, so much vulnerability right there on the surface um, that, I, that I sensed. And yeah, when the daughter put her arm around her mother like that, I just thought, oh, it just broke my heart. I just thought it was so sweet. And, um, and I, I made this picture, but we, we really didn't shoot very many. Um, I kind of wish I had shot them individually now, <laughs> but, but no, I, I'm, I'm really happy with this trio. Yeah, it's very beautiful. Also sad, of course, but it's the eyes, the look. And uh, this time the window does like uh, uh, the job of a little frame. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. yeah. But a frame that's not ending. So it's like a little bit more endless kind of a situation picture. I like it a lot. Really Thank cool. You. So now we change from uh, this project to your uh, normal projects you take. So I'm really curious uh, to show them and uh, you explain uh, what the project is about. Um, so this, yeah, so everything we're going to see from now is commissioned work. Um, this is a portrait of a woman called Molly Marne, who is a block printer. Um, she makes fabrics and um, tableware with beautiful block printing um, and it was photographed in a place called Charleston Farmhouse which um, is very famous in, in uh, the UK but maybe less so in, uh, in Europe. It's where the Bloomsbury group, um, uh, Vanessa Bell, Virginia Woolf, um, that lot uh, who are all writers and um, and artists sort of between the wars 20s 30s 40s they all hung out in this house um, which is in the countryside not far from where I live and every inch of it is painted I mean you can see on the fireplace but literally everything is painted and it's now a museum and um, you can visit the house and they have exhibitions in a separate uh, gallery and they have a shop and Molly had made um, some items for the shop and so we were photographing her in the house. Um, the light in that house is amazing. If I tell you that it was sheet rain, it was so dark on that day, but my amazing Z series Nikon just made magic anyway and um, yeah I don't quite know where the light came from I could barely see anything <laughs> and it's not lit it's only window lighting yeah, I just wanted to ask if this is any artificial light because it looks like a softbox from the right oh, I... something sorry no. yeah, yeah no, it's super no. it, uh, so we are in this room is actually the um, the studio what they call the studio in charleston farmhouse so it, it is quite a tall room with a big window um and they would paint in that room so it probably had the best light on that particular day and any day but no it's just window lit i'm not even sure oh, I, I probably used a reflector actually i think i did have a reflector uh, it's fine. I'll, from because of the shade and and the reflection there, I, I thought maybe it could be, you know. But you never know. It's, no, it's, no. Yeah, yeah, very very nice portrait. I like to see you see the the whole environment. As you say, the paintings and the old lamp there and the drawings on the chimney and even the reflection is is really really cool. 
yeah, of her back. Well, she's a very, yeah, she just looks great. She, I think we all, I mean, anyone who knows this house wishes that they could live in this house. And you, um, it's very rare that you're allowed to photograph there. And when you do photograph there, you're not allowed to touch anything. I mean, literally nothing. So, um, it, you know, it's a great uh, privilege to be in there, even if it was not for very long. So I enjoyed making this picture. Yeah, the expression is really great. No, I love this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's switch to the next one. Yeah. Uh, so this amazing woman, um, it's funny actually, because a lot of the pictures you've chosen, I've, I had to, for one reason or another, had to make them really fast, very, very fast. And this picture is of a woman called Rebecca Willer, who is a gallery owner and um, in, in, uh, in London, in Kensington. So she, so I went to her gallery. She, do, uh, it's mostly objects um, that, she, that she sells and shows. Um, and it, it was for a magazine called The Design Edit. So we were mo mostly photographing the objects and then but they did want a portrait as well and uh, we spent quite a long time photographing all the objects and different kind of combinations and then when i said okay can we do the portrait she was kind of not really into it and um she thought that maybe we would do it in you know three shots or something and this is an example of where I find shooting tethered to my laptop really, really helps because I had to coax her into playing with me. Um, I took a few portraits and then I showed her the pictures and she, and, and she liked them. And I was able to say, look, I like them, but I think we can do better. Let's, can we, can we have another go? And, um, and I think it made her feel safe to be able to view the pictures at kind of just after I'd taken them and be able to feed back to me. And I, re I really enjoy that process, actually. I think a lot of photographers don't like it, but I think if you are photographing someone you want them to be happy with the picture you you know it's their image and they I, I always want people to portray themselves how they want to be seen and I always think of it as a collaboration um, I mean I chose where we stood and I always choose for the light again this is window lit um, I mean, she was a gift. You know, she's wearing all black. She had these, I saw these glasses on the side and I was like, could you put those on please? Because <laughs> they're just amazing. Um, they're by some French Maison Bonny, I think it was called. Anyway, yeah, what was really great for me was the second lot of pictures that we took, we looked at them and she kind of, she's American and she kind of punched me in the arm and said, hey, you're good. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> I was like, phew. <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, good, great. And then we went and did a third mini session. I mean, when I say three sessions, it's like two minutes each, but yeah, I like it. It's really a nice feeling if the people are so happy with the portrait. And yeah. I do mostly, uh, I shoot mostly tethered. Uh, Sometimes lately I could figure out some way to don't use a cable to shoot. It's even better because sometimes I'm, I'm falling over my own cables if it's like, like yeah. that way. But it's, it's really cool to, if somebody is a little bit insecure or something, we just go through the images and, and I tell them what I like and what we could do a little bit better maybe. Yeah, and and so they feel them very comfortable when after uh, we finish the shoot and they know we have some pictures they really like and and there's no surprise coming up later if they have to look for it. Sure. Very yeah. nice one. Yeah, the, the, with the dark cloth, uh, it really looks really really strong and it pops out like three D like a little bit. Mm, thank you. So, yeah. Um. So yes, this one, 
This one makes me laugh. Um, again, I didn't have very long with this uh this guy he he also is a gallery uh, owner and we're shooting in the gallery his name is tim jeffries and um he he just sat like that i mean i was like oh my god this is a gift <laughs> you know i again did not pose him and did not ask him to sit in this way he he's very very tall man so when he sat when i did ask him to sit and when he sat, you know, he just kind of was all limbs. It was brilliant. Um, and I, uh, I, you know, he moved very quickly. He didn't hold that pose for very long. But um, yeah, I just, I just loved it. The, the symmetry of it and the awkwardness of it. You know, he's, he's a very much a man about town. I think, I think he, I can't remember quite when, but I mean, this guy went out with Claudia Schiffer back when whatever and um he's uh he look how he's dressed and everything but there's something about this pose that i just thought was so kind of um unexpected i suppose mm -hmm. um, i can see that and uh yeah i just thought it was quirky quirky he was a really charming guy and he his art collection is very quirky uh so actually i kind of figured maybe he'll like this i mean i gave him a, a more traditional one as well but this is the one i like best you know you more i see your work you remind me a little bit of a friend uh, uh who's doing a lot of editorial work and and, and portraits i can show it to you then it's it's really interesting you're very versatile. Your your portraits look uh, very. They're not all like the same style somehow. You know what I mean? That's what I really like. You you have. Don't get me right uh, wrong. You get. You have. You have a really great style, but they are all a little bit different. I all like them a lot. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, thank you. I think, I, I think if um, I'm a portrait photographer, but I really love reportage and documentary photography and so i think i don't like artifice so um i will work with whatever i've got and uh i don't like to change i i will never ask people to get changed or um i mean i like I never put up a backdrop. I will just work with what I've got. And so naturally people are all different and their environments are all different. So your style has to, in some way, you know, adapt to, to whatever you're given. Um, I mean, then there's the edit and I will tend to go for similar ish things in my edit. Uh, I'm not, I'm not massive for people being very smiley. I prefer a more kind of melancholy, somber look, but yeah. Yeah, that's maybe it's a little bit the same when I shoot my collodion bed plates. There is not much space for a smile because we have to just wait a little bit. But it's yeah. like uh, you capture more serious images. I had one smiley one. This was really lucky with a little kid. It was we are like, like a jackpot in Lotto one. Once in a lifetime, I did it and done. Never will do it a second time, I think. It's not, not very easy to do that. Yeah. I like this also a lot. Okay, let's do the next yeah. one. Yeah, this one is interesting. Looks like like shot on a Hasselblad somehow, but it's not, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's not the case. I did crop it square. Um, so this, is, this was a funny one. Um, uh, this guy is called Egg White. Um, okay. That's not his real name, but his he goes by the name Egg. Uh, he's a he's a music producer. But in actual fact, um, I shot this on a family shoot because he, like, I don't really do family shoots, but I am friends with his sister-in-law. 
I think it is, yeah, sister-in-law. And so I was photographing the entire family and there were a lot of them. Um, and the, we mostly, photo it was for the grandfather's uh, birthday. And um, we were photographing in the house and then we went to a park and I was photographing the kids in little groups and the couples in little groups and then the whole families. I mean, it was like almost like a wedding photographer style scenario without the wedding. And, but then he just stood there for a second and I saw the jumper and the, and the building behind. And I just had, I just took, I think I took two frames. Um, and then his wife, came in the shot and I've got a lovely picture of him and his wife but it's that one picture of him on his own that I just thought was just a, a bit of a gift um so yeah this is I guess more of a actually taken within a much more reportage type uh, uh moment because I just turned and saw him and was like oh my god <laughs> take it which is I think that's why I had to crop it well wanted to crop it square is that the building doesn't extend but it works beautifully like the, it's like uh before the blue hour i guess and it's the, the yeah it was colors. golden hour yeah yeah, yeah we went nice. to this park for gold for golden hour um so yeah the light was really amazing beautiful beautiful captured and i like these moments it's like yeah very very nice okay yeah. Let's just go on. One more we have. This one. Um, so this uh, I mentioned right at the beginning of uh, of our of our talk that um, that I was doing a lot of work for a um, a website called The Garnered, and um, this is a picture that I took um, for that. Uh, so it's it's a. <laughs> It was extraordinary. I mean, I love being a portrait photographer because I get to go into crazy places, but I think this is one of the best places I've ever got to shoot. Um, it's a hat blocker. Um, so he, this man and his business partner make the, the, uh, the blocks that hats are then made from. And, um, it was just extraordinary. You, you, I was only allowed to stand in two places because they, they use molten metal. So what he's holding in his hand there is a kind of big ladle of a molten metal. And he was about to pour it into a, a mold that is on the ground. And the ground, I don't know if you can see, but it's, it's actually earth. So to stop the whole place going up in flame, wow. this is actually beaten earth. So it was, uh, I mean, I'd never been anywhere like it. And there were mountains of these plaster cast uh, hat blocks everywhere. And um, in the bottom left-hand corner, you can just see a few. And I, this was actually a big mountain of them. And I wasn't allowed to photograph them because those were the hat blocks of Philip Tracy who um, is apparently a very litigious hat maker and he wants his hats not photographed. <laughs> so it was just, uh, I mean, again, I, I had very little control. I, I, I think I really like, um, I really like working with constraints. Maybe that's why I've enjoyed photographing my, furloughed friends series so much is the constraint of the glass you just have to find a way through and in this case it was again that I, I i was allowed to stand where i was standing for this shot and on the other side and that's it um i didn't want to change my lenses too much because it was so dusty in there that i was scared for my camera <laughs> so i i just but then you know sometimes it just works <laughs> yeah it definitely did. it definitely did here is this your fire or something yeah that's fire 
Oh, that's wow. fire then what he's holding is the metal yeah. and also i think that again i photographed him at work so this was one very short moment where he wasn't moving like all the other shots are really much more reportage style they're like and they some of them have a bit of blur a bit of movement you see flame you see smoke you see all sorts and i think it was just a a kind of surprised moment of stillness within this, you know, hectic chaos, what looks like complete chaos um, of a workshop. And uh, I just, I love that stillness that he has and he's really looking at me. Um, yeah, it was, it was a fun, a fun moment. Yeah, really nice image. He's standing there in this kind of chaos. For sure, it's not chaos for him because he knows yeah. what's going on everywhere. And yeah, really great. Yeah, okay, yeah he, kept, he kept assuring me that he knew where every hat was. I was like, really? I don't know. <laughs> Can't believe it. I know these places. There's like a shop for uh, uh, screws and stuff in Vienna. If you go in there, you think it's like a garbage something. I have no idea. But there's a, a, a really nice lady working there. And if you ask for, I needed like a, a screw for a tripod. So they're not easy to get because we have the metric system here. And so, and she just ran away, came back in 10 seconds and had this little screw in her hand. And I went out again. It's amazing. Oh, without wow. a computer, without anything. And that reminds me a little bit on that place. So the last question I want to ask you is, do you have any question for yourself you want to ask yourself? Oh gosh. Yes, you did send me that and I totally forgot to think about it. Um, oh, questions, a million questions for myself all the time. Um, I, it's been that doing this series, has been really interesting because it's not been for money and i think um i mean i know that this is will end and we'll all go back to normal and everything but there has been something quite magical about making work just for the pleasure of making work um in a way that i have been very bad i mean obviously i'm always taking pictures of family and stuff, but actually a whole series and the discipline of going out and photographing every day and not earning anything from it has been weirdly releasing. So this isn't a question yet, is it? I have to turn this into a question. <laughs> so no, it's, it's, it's fine if you could just give me the answer. It's, it's, it's really good because... I know what the question is maybe i should stop being a photographer for money <laughs> and do something else for money i don't know <laughs> um i don't know yeah is i you know I, I think that this whole period of time has thrown up so many questions i've had questions about friendship i've had questions about what i've just said i've had questions about oh, will i ever want to photograph not through glass again i don't know um <laughs> yeah but Isn't I can't that, that, any of them. no that's that's a really good point to the end you know it's like not about uh money it's about the things we like to do to shoot portraits and what we it's about money for sure we have to make our living but but i think uh, a lot of, of us are just enjoying taking portraits and right now we just can do that <laughs> yeah i think that's it yeah. Okay. I think the whole period has answered a very fundamental question for me, actually, which is I'm in the right job because as soon as I didn't have anything to do, the only thing I wanted to do was take pictures. Um, if the only thing I'd wanted to do was, you know, write or make bread or something, then maybe I'd have gone, oh, maybe I shouldn't be a photographer. But the question was answered by the fact that I just was like, I've got to make pictures. <laughs> so that was nice. Yeah, very cool. So thanks for spending our time with me today or with us today, with the viewers. And uh, 
Yeah, to all the others, visit our United Art Gallery. I put the link as always down there. Also put the link to your Instagram, to your website, to everything else in the descriptions. And yeah, thanks for being with us. And I see you guys thank in the next you. one. Well, thank you very much. And for everything you're doing, I think it's so cool what you have done not just making your own work but also bringing all these people together i think it's extraordinary and very generous of you and uh, i really hope that it can long may it continue it's great it's really cool so thank, thank you thank you so much i have already a lot of more images coming up and we have already the first page filled on the website so we are going to fill the second one and I have a lot of interesting ones coming up. I just have to figure out for some how to do that because I got some nudes and they're so cool. And I have to figure out how to put them on the website, but I'm gonna do, they're very strong. And uh, it's, you're gonna see it. Brilliant. Mm -hmm.